Thank you, Governor, Secretary Theridis. Good afternoon. The COVID-19 pandemic has touched every corner of the Commonwealth, and we have seen how it's impacted many families and individuals' financial stability, especially for working families and our residents who have historically experienced food insecurity. Every individual, family, and community in the Commonwealth should have access to nutritious food, and we recognized early in the pandemic that we needed a nimble and focused effort was required to address this during the public health crisis. In April, the COVID-19 Command Center convened a food security task force made up of members from public and private agencies and the legislature to deliver actionable recommendations for the near term. As the governor has mentioned, we announced a $56 million investment to address food security, which includes $5 million in additional funding to expand the Health Healthy Incentives Program, or HIP. Earlier this month, we announced that the HIP program would add an additional 39 vendors to the program, joining 200 existing vendors. A majority are local small-scale farmers who live in or have close ties to the communities and people they intend to serve. The Department of Transitional Assistance continues to onboard these new vendors into the program. I'd like to share a few other updates on some of our food security programs. After weeks of decline, applications for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, otherwise known as SNAP, began increasing in late July as people who were closed for the pandemic unemployment sought renewed food assistance. The number of applications at the start of August just over 13,000 approaches levels that we had not seen since April. As of the end of last week, over 508,000 households were receiving SNAP benefits in Massachusetts. Prior to the public health crisis, the SNAP caseload was about 450,000 households, so obviously this is an increase of about 13 percent. Since March, DTA has also been issuing additional staff payments to bring families' monthly benefits up to the maximum monthly amount for those families not already receiving the maximum benefit for their household. This happened again this last August, bringing $209 million into the Commonwealth so far. As you know, the Commonwealth implemented the SNAP online purchasing in late May, and since then, $6.6 million has been spent by nearly 70,000 online grocery transactions made by SNAP recipients. DTA is working with the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, the Massachusetts Co Councils on Aging, and other partners to improve SNAP access, particularly among our seniors. We will be bringing on 10 new outreach partners, most of which are Councils on Aging, to ensure that seniors who are eligible for SNAP sign up for the benefits. We're also partnering with the Shaw Foundation in collaboration with Project Bread to target outreach to increase participation in the Pandemic EBT Program, or PEBT, in key cities. These benefits supplement the free and reduced price school meals children would have been receiving if not for school closures due to COVID. Other efforts include virtual conversations at the local level, a partnership of the Shaw Foundation and mayors in Boston, Lynn, Worcester, and Brockton to raise, to raise awareness of PEBT and encourage families to use the benefit. Additional cities will be coming online soon. These cities, why these cities? It's because they have high rates of PEBT cards having been, at, having been opened but many families had not activated the card and have used it. Across the state, we're pleased that more than 83, 83% of PEBT cards have been activated and used, and families of more than 518,000 students have received benefits. Households receive $5.70 per child per school day for the duration of school closures, or it's about $28.50 a week. But we want all families who have the PBT cards to, to access the benefit. I want to thank all of the members of the Food Security Task Force for their efforts to make sure that every person in the Commonwealth has access to nutritious food during this time. And I'd like to now turn it over to the co-chair of the Food Security Task Force, Secretary Theoridis.